In this video, we'll go over how to manage state in our user interface using SwiftUI state and binding properties. More specifically, we'll work on our control visibility toggle button. Using SwiftUI state and binding properties, the control visibility toggle button will show or hide the control button bar based on its Boolean value. Before we get started, this is the hardware and software used in this video. If you are following along with the videos in this course, you may have noticed that we use an iPhone 11 Pro Max running iOS 14.0.1 and Xcode 12.0.1 in previous videos. Moving forward, we will be using an iPhone 12 Pro Max running iOS 14.2. Alongside iOS 14.2, we'll be using Xcode 12.2. When updating Xcode, you might have to make some adjustments to your code as syntax and framework sometimes change. Now let's get started. As mentioned before, this video will focus on managing state in our user interface. Apple has created an amazing guide that goes into detail on how to manage state in our SwiftUI apps. I will summarize it here, but I highly recommend you go through it on your own. State properties establish a single source of truth that is shared across views. By marking the property as state using a property wrapper, we enable SwiftUI to manage the underlying storage for the property. When the value of this property is changed, SwiftUI automatically updates the affected parts of the view. State properties are stored in the topmost view that needs access to the data. In the Apple documentation, this topmost view is referred to as the least common ancestor. Very often, access to state properties will need to be shared with child views. We can give a child view read and write access by declaring a property in the child with the binding property wrapper. A binding represents a reference to existing storage preserving a single source of truth for the underlying data. If a child view does not need right access to state, we can use a standard Swift property. To see how all of this works in practice, let's implement our control visibility toggle button. As we did with our control button bar, let's first think about what we want to achieve before jumping into the code. For our control visibility toggle button, we have one button pushed to the right of the screen. To achieve this, we can use an H stack. However, an H stack will center our button. So to push our button to the right, we'll use a spacer. The flexible spacer will take up as much horizontal space to the left while leaving enough space for our button. This is exactly what we want to achieve. Let's dive into the code to see how this works. Let's look for our control visibility toggle button struct. As mentioned previously, we'll use an H stack to arrange our elements. Let's add a spacer to fill the space to the left of our toggle button. Next, we'll add a Z stack right below our spacer. A Z stack is a great way to layer content on top of each other. This is exactly what we'll do for our toggle button. Inside of our Z stack, add a color element. We'll set it to black with an opacity of 0.25 or 25%. Below our color element code, or really on top of the color element in the user interface, we'll add a button. For the button action, we'll add a print statement saying control visibility toggle button pressed. Next, we'll give our button an image with system name Rectangle. Again, we can style our button using SwiftUI modifiers. First, we'll set our font size to 25. Second, we'll set the foreground color to white. This is essentially the color of our image symbol. And third, we'll set the button style to plain button style. We're also going to style our Z stack, which is really our button container. We'll give it a frame of 50 by 50 and a corner radius of 8. Build and press resume in the canvas. We now see our control visibility toggle button. However, the padding doesn't look quite right. Let's fix this. To do so, we'll use the padding modifier. We'll add a top padding of 45 pixels. Additionally, we'll add padding on the trailing side of the button. Let's do 20 pixels. Build and press resume in the canvas. Our control visibility toggle button looks great. Next, we'll work on the logic to show or hide our control button bar when our toggle button is pressed. This is when SwiftUI's state and binding properties come into play. In our content view, let's create a new state variable. To do so, we write at state private var, the name of the variable, in this case we'll call it isControlsVisible, and the type, in this case bool. We'll initialize our variable to true. Now comes the most important part of this video. Our state variable has to be updated by our control visibility toggle button. This means that our button, which is located in the control view, needs read and write access to the isControlsVisibleState property in the content view. 
In this case, we need to create a two-way connection to the state by using a binding. Let's see how we can do that. We're going to create a binding property in our controls visibility toggle button view. To do so, we'll write add binding var is controls visible and declare this variable to be a bool. Note how we do not assign a value to this property. A binding doesn't have its own storage. Instead, it references a state property stored somewhere else. In this case, our state is stored in content view. Build the project. We now see an error in our control view that says, missing argument for parameter is controls visible in call. Let's use Xcode to help us fix this error. We got an error because our struct updated its constructor to expect a binding Boolean property to be passed along as an argument. It is essentially saying, hey, I need you to link me to the source of truth. We know that our source of truth is the state property in the content view, which is the parent of our control view. Therefore, we need to create an additional binding property in our control view to link our toggle button to our content view. We can copy our binding code from the toggle button. To pass along the binding, prefix the property name with a dollar sign. Build the project. We now see a similar error as before, but in this case, the error is in our content view. Let's use Xcode again to help us fix the error. Our control view constructor is now updated and expects a binding Boolean property to be passed along as an argument. We can now pass in a binding to our state using prefix dollar sign and the property name. By using the dollar sign, we essentially pass in a binding to the underlying storage of the state property. Build the project. We now see that there are no more errors. However, we still have a little bit of work to do in our control view. As mentioned before, our toggle button shows or hides our control button bar depending on the value stored in isControlsVisible. So we're going to add an if statement in our control view. If isControlsVisible is true, we'll show our control button bar. Else, we do not render the control button bar view. And finally, we need to update our control visibility toggle button view. First, we want to toggle our isControlsVisible binding property in our button action. And second, we want to update our button image depending on the state of our binding property. We're going to use a ternary operator to do so. If isControlsVisible is true, our image will be rectangle. If false, our image will be slider.horizontal.below.rectangle. We are now ready to test and run our app on a physical device. When I tap on the control visibility toggle button, our control button bar disappears and our toggle button icon is updated. When tapped again, the control button bar reappears and the toggle button icon is again updated. And that's it for this video. 